Now we all know about the story of Titanic, the unsinkable ship that met its end, luring hundreds of people down with it. Join us as we talk about the things found and restored from the ill-fated ship. Every single item on today's list holds a unique story, so make sure to listen to them all. Let's begin. This quite amazing little object here. It's a pocket watch that belonged to a crew member on the Titanic. 19. Pocket watch. It's not just an old watch, it's a relic weathered by the salty depths that claimed the Titanic. This timepiece once belonged to Sinai Cantor. He, along with his 24-year-old bride Miriam, embarked on the ill-fated Titanic journey from Russia in 1912 when tragedy struck. Sinai, aspiring to be a doctor in the Bronx, succumbed to the icy waters with the silver Swiss-made watch snug in his green suit pocket. Miriam, with plans to study dentistry, miraculously survived. The watch, with its Hebrew numbering and an embossed Moses holding the Ten Commandments, froze at 11.40 p.m. on April 15, 1912, when the Titanic collided with an iceberg. Perhaps Sinai, on the deck, glimpsed at it while Miriam boarded lifeboat 12, marked women and children first. As the Titanic sank over the next two hours, Sinai's watch and a pocket telescope in his possession likely witnessed the heartbreaking sight of Miriam's lifeboat against the sinking ship. Recovered by the C.S. McKay Bennett, Sinai's embalmed body, dressed only in underwear, made its way to New York. Miriam fought for his belongings, including the watch, which eventually found its way to a Massachusetts home as she paid tribute every April 15th with fresh flowers on his grave. In 2018, the watch found a new home through heritage auctions with John Miotel, a California museum owner, adding it to his collection of Titanic timepieces, including Colonel John Jacob Astor, 4th S18. The Big Piece, Meet the Big Piece, a colossal 15-ton or 14-ton behemoth, salvaged from the depths of the Atlantic, once a proud part of the Titanic's starboard side hull. This mammoth artifact, also dubbed the Debris Field or the Million Dollar Dive, wasn't just plucked from the ocean depths. It's a direct link to that infamous night in 1912 when the Titanic met its tragic end. Picture it as a giant time capsule encapsulating the aftermath of one of history's most notorious disasters. From shattered hull fragments to scattered debris, this massive piece offers an immersive journey into the heart, wrenching aftermath of the Titanic's demise. Unveiled in exhibitions worldwide, the big piece is a tangible connection to the past. It's a stark reminder of the opulence turned to wreckage, the stories lost in the abyss, and the indelible mark left by the Titanic on the pages of history. As you stand before this mammoth artifact, you can't help but feel the weight of the ocean's secrets and the echoes of a bygone era, inviting you to step into the shoes of those who sailed on that ill-fated voyage. 17. Cherub Statue On the fateful night of April 15, 1912, the RMS Titanic met its tragic end, succumbing to the icy waters of the North Atlantic. As the vessel descended into the depths, compartments breached, and panic ensued among passengers who had initially dismissed the sinking as unthinkable for the supposedly unsinkable ship. The Grand Staircase, a symbol of luxury on the Titanic, became a focal point of the disaster. Water flooded this iconic space, dislodging a bronze cherub situated at the bottom of the A-deck staircase. Amid the chaos, speculation suggests that someone may have clung to the cherub's base as water inundated the area. The bronze cherub, with one foot attached to its base, eventually became dislodged. Years later, this artifact was discovered in the debris field at the ocean's bottom, retrieved for preservation. Found on the ocean floor by Bob Ballard in 1986 and later recovered in 1987, the cherub underwent a meticulous conservation process in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Fast forward to 2015, and the Luxor in Las Vegas hosted the Titanic Artifacts Exhibition, featuring a replica of the Grand Staircase. Among the displayed items was the rarely seen Bronze Cherub, offering visitors a unique glimpse into the Titanic's history. 
16. A letter. A recently discovered letter written by ship steward Richard Geddes aboard the ill-fated Titanic reveals a harrowing near miss with another vessel just days before the tragic iceberg collision. Dated April 14, 1912, the letter recounts the Titanic narrowly avoiding a collision with the New York, which had broken its ropes while passing. Richard, who tragically perished with over 1,500 others in the disaster, wrote to his wife in Southampton, detailing the unsettling incident. The letter, housed in a White Star Line envelope, was set to be auctioned in Devizes, Wiltshire in 2019 with an estimated value of up to $22,609 to €21,000. Auctioneer Andrew Aldridge described the artifact as exceptional, citing its onboard origin, accompanying official paperwork related to Mr. Richard and its poignant content. The letter sheds light on a moment that, if it had resulted in a collision, could have altered history. Alongside the letter, the auction will feature Mr. Richard's death certificate, acknowledging his demise in the Titanic disaster, along with several pictures of him and his wife. In the correspondence, Richard expresses optimism about the Titanic, believing it to be, quote-unquote, a great deal better and steadier than other ships, concluding with expressions of love and kisses for his wife and children. 15. Vials of Perfume Introducing Eau de Titanic, a fragrance sourced from the depths of the ocean amidst the remnants of the Titanic wreckage. Divers, exploring the debris surrounding the sunken vessel, stumbled upon a leather pouch containing numerous vials of rare perfume oil. These precious scents were abandoned by a German perfumer, Adolf Saalfeld, who hastily fled to the lifeboats, leaving behind his life's work on the sinking ship. The company with salvage rights, RMS Titanic Inc., was in discussions with various manufacturers, including Calvin Klein's CK1 producer, to craft a marketable Titanic perfume. Among potential names for the fragrance, Heart of the Ocean was a top contender, paying homage to the iconic sapphire necklace worn by Kate Winslet in the movie. But what does Eau de Titanic smell like? According to Dick Barton, the salvage expert who made the discovery, the essence oils carry floral notes, reminiscent of lavender and roses. The pouch of scents, marked with Salfeld's name, was found during a dive around the ship's stern back in 2001. Salfeld, a German perfumer en route to establish a high-end US company, survived the disaster by joining a lifeboat with women and children. Yet, Post-tragedy, he faded into obscurity due to the public's unfavorable perception of men who didn't go down with the ship. 14. Last Meal Menu As darkness fell on April 14, 1912, the Titanic's passengers gathered for their last suppers, unwittingly etching history into the menus that would survive the sinking. Notable among these relics is the first-class lunch menu clutched by an American banker's wife as she escaped the disaster. These menus, preserved by a handful of passengers, narrate the culinary tapestry of the ill-fated voyage. Third-class passengers, constituting the majority, experienced a different dining reality. Unlike typical ships of the time, Titanic's third-class patrons were served meals in a communal school cafeteria-like setting. Daily menu cards detailed the working-class tradition of a hearty midday dinner. Meanwhile, the elite first- and second-class passengers indulged in more opulent fare. The first-class dining room offered elaborate, French-inspired dinners, served on silver platters by attentive waiters who recommended wine pairings. While the exact recipes from the Titanic's galley remain elusive, the culinary trends of the era favored rich ingredients like butter and cream. These surviving menus not only provide insights into the diverse dining experiences aboard the Titanic, but also serve as tangible connections to the poignant culinary moments of that historic night and era. 13. Keys A set of keys from the RMS Titanic, once owned by Samuel Ernest Hemming, the ship's lamp trimmer and a survivor of the tragic sinking, surpassed its estimated value at a Christie's auction in London in 2016, selling for $26,400 or €24,433. 
The Keys were Samuels, who began his maritime career at the age of 15, was 43 when he boarded the Titanic. During the following U.S. senatorial inquiry into the disaster, he recounted his duties, which included mixing paint, maintaining decks, and overseeing the ship's lamps. On the fateful night, Samuel was awakened by the iceberg's impact and reported escaping air to his chief officer. Unaware of the extent of the damage, he returned to his bunk, but was later alerted by colleagues about the imminent danger. He played a crucial role in preparing and loading lifeboats with lamps before the Titanic sank. After surviving the disaster, Samuel continued his maritime career. The keys were part of a remarkable collection consigned to Christie's by collector David Gainsborough Roberts, which also included items like Lawrence of Arabia's desert robe, Queen Victoria's drawers, and John Lennon's cufflinks, all fetching notable sums at the auction. 12. Carpet. In the fascinating lore of Titanic artifacts, a seemingly humble relic, a scrap of carpet, unravels an intriguing saga. In 1912, Frederick Dant Ray, then a steward of the first-class dining room, stumbled upon a vivid green carpet snippet during the Titanic's final construction. Seeking a keepsake for his wife, he gained permission to pocket this seemingly inconspicuous piece. Little did he fathom the historical weight it would carry. Surviving the harrowing sinking by escaping in lifeboat number 13, Frederick repurposed the carpet into a piano stool for his wife. The relic, temporarily forgotten, resurfaced during Frederick's move to Essex in the 1960s. Unveiled as the stool was packed, the lid broke, revealing the Titanic's long-forgotten carpet. A piece of this historic fabric found its way to the Titanic Historical Society, with Frederick expressing modesty in his letter, deeming the carpet pattern of small value. Eventually, this fragment of the carpet was sold to collector Ken Schultz, who further divided it into 10 pieces for private ownership. 11. Life Jackets To commemorate the 110th anniversary of the Titanic's sinking, a rare artifact took center stage at the Titanic Belfast Museum in 2016, one of only six remaining life jackets from the ill-fated ship. Displayed for the first time in Ireland, this linen and cork life jacket, crafted by Fosbury and Co. L. Teed, offers a connection to the tragic events of April 1912. Recovered by Robert Edwards, quartermaster of the cable ship Mackay Bennett from the debris field, the artifact remains in fair condition, retaining its original ribbon ties after more than a century. As visitors explore this unique piece of history in the grand atrium of Titanic Belfast, they are reminded of the human stories woven into the fabric of the Titanic's legacy. With only six life jackets surviving out of the 3,500 on board, the public had a rare opportunity to witness a tangible link to the past. The display coincided with A Night to Remember, an event on April 14th, guiding visitors through history and inviting them to participate in a candle lighting ceremony at 11.40 p.m., marking the precise moment the Titanic struck the iceberg. In the words of Judith Owen's MBE, chief executive of Titanic Belfast, the life jacket's presence made this commemoration something special and a tribute to those lost in the tragedy. 10. Jewelry. In a remarkable turn of events during the extensive digital scan of the Titanic wreckage, a stunning artifact emerged, a necklace featuring the tooth of a megalodon, an ancient shark species that roamed the seas over 23 million years ago. Magellan, the deep water investigation company leading the scan, unveiled the necklace which has silently resided on the ocean floor since the Titanic's fateful sinking in 1912. The Megalodon tooth pendant was discovered amidst the debris field, a vast expanse located between the separated bow and stern of the Titanic. Detailed images from the scan showcased the gold necklace, offering a close-up view of the well-preserved Megalodon tooth. Richard Parkinson, CEO of Magellan, expressed his awe, describing the find as astonishing, beautiful, and breathtaking. This discovery unfolds as part of an ambitious project, marking the most extensive underwater scanning endeavor in history, dedicated to creating a full-size digital replica of the Titanic. 9. Titanic Deck Plan 
a rare Titanic deck plan, once owned by the first-class couple Ida and Isidore Strauss, was poised to fetch up to $62,294 or €57,660 at auction in 2011. The Strausses met a tragic end on the doomed liner, with Ida choosing to stay with her husband instead of taking a place on a lifeboat, a poignant moment portrayed in the film Titanic. The deck plans were exclusively distributed to the three 24 first-class passengers upon their shipboard in Southampton on April 10, 1912. Only three such plans are believed to exist today, with this particular one hitting the auction block. The deck plan, in the possession of the Strauss's maid Ellen Bird, who survived the disaster, offers a detailed layout of the first-class accommodations, marking each room's features and amenities. Ellen, who retained the 41 by 29 inch or 104 by 73 centimeter document until her passing, kept it in surprisingly delicate condition despite its 99-year history. The item is a collector's dream, representing a rare connection to the wealthy Strauss couple and their time aboard the Titanic. 8. Three Bells of Titanic The Titanic's iconic whistles, weighing nearly 750 pounds or 340 kilos each and standing over 4 feet or 1.2 meters tall, were more than just maritime instruments. They were powerful voices of the ship's presence. Made of robust bronze and powered by steam, these whistles, consisting of three chambers, played a significant role in maritime communication. According to White Star Line procedures, they sounded daily at noon and when departing ports. But their most critical use was during fog and poor visibility, signaling the ship's location to other vessels. Interestingly, the Olympic-class liners, including the Titanic, featured an automated whistle-blowing system on the bridge. This innovation spared officers from manually blowing the whistles during fog, allowing them to focus on maintaining a vigilant lookout for potential hazards. In 1993, a salvage expedition recovered a set of Titanic's whistles from the seabed debris field, meticulously restoring them. In 1999, during an exhibition in St. Paul, Minnesota, the whistles, powered by compressed air to prevent damage, were sounded for the first time in 87 years. The event drew an astounding crowd of around 100,000 people, leaving a lasting impression as Titanic's whistles echoed once again after decades of silence. You can nowadays find the video of the mesmerizing event online. 7. White Star Line Binoculars Amidst the tragic narrative of the RMS Titanic, the role of binoculars takes a nuanced turn. Contrary to popular belief, officers and lookouts on the Titanic didn't extensively use binoculars for general observation due to their limiting field of vision. Instead, these optical instruments were deployed when a distant object required closer scrutiny. But a twist of fate cast a shadow over the Titanic's use of binoculars even before it embarked on its journey. The intended second officer, David Blair, who held the keys to the binocular locker, inadvertently left the ship during a personnel reshuffle in Southampton. This left the crew without access to binoculars for the entire voyage and later fueled criticism as a contributing factor to the disaster. Despite ongoing debates about whether the presence of binoculars could have altered the tragic outcome, Prevailing views lean towards the belief that their absence might not have changed the course of events. In a poignant twist, a pair of binoculars recovered from the Titanic's debris field adds another layer to their history. These binoculars were once used by the first officer of the SS Runic, another vessel of the White Star Line, while the manufacturer was J.W. Ray & Company, who also crafted the engine telegraphs for both the Titanic and its sister ship, the Olympic. 6. Violin In the haunting tale of the Titanics, the poignant melody of the ship's band perseveres as a monument to courage in the face of doom. As passengers scrambled for lifeboats or faced the icy abyss, the band, led by Wallace Hartley, continued to play on the tilting deck. Wallace, gripping his rosewood violin, played until the last possible moment, then carefully packed it into his luggage, strapped to his body, 
a desperate hope for survival. When Wallace's lifeless body surfaced ten days later, the violin remained steadfastly clutched to him. A gift from his fiancée, it returned to her after the Titanic's demise. Following her death in 1939, the instrument vanished, only to resurface in an English attic in 2006. Seven years of authentication confirmed its authenticity, and now, despite some warping from the water, the violin is nowadays displayed in numerous museums. 5. Gold Locket Nestled within the deep ocean floor, a locket tells a touching tale of love and loss, not from cinematic fiction, but from the real-life drama of the Titanic. Found amidst the wreckage, the locket once belonged to Virginia Estelle McDowell Clark and her husband, Walter Miller Clark, affluent first-class passengers on the Titanic's maiden voyage. Displayed at the Artifact Exhibition in the Luxor Hotel and Casino Las Vegas, these relics resurface on the 105th anniversary of the ship's tragic sinking in 1912. The Clarks, on a belated honeymoon in Europe, climbed aboard the Titanic to return early for their son's birthday. In the midst of the iceberg's impact, Virginia urged Walter, engrossed in a poker game, to investigate. While she survived, Walter did not. Despite a near-empty lifeboat, Walter chose to ensure his wife's safety, and he perished. A stroke of luck in the research led to the identification of the locket's initials, VC, linking it to Virginia Clark. Childhood sweethearts from Montana, the Clark's poignant tale is etched into the artifacts recovered from the abyss, echoing the heart-wrenching stories of the Titanic's fateful journey. 4. Doll's Head A porcelain doll, once abandoned on the Titanic, has found a new home in the Ayamonte Museum in southern Spain, 102 years after the ship's tragic maiden voyage. Documented in survivor Eva Hart's memoirs, the doll was rescued by Abel Federico Nogueras 37 years ago. Eva, one of the few to escape the Titanic, left the doll behind during the evacuation. Remarkably, it resurfaced 65 years later when a tuna fisherman found it by accident. After Abel Federico's death, his son contacted doll collector Teresa Martin, who now owns around 300 dolls. With exhaustive research, Teresa identified the doll's link to Eva Hart and meticulously designed a museum corner for its display. The porcelain doll, with only the head and neck intact, remains one of the insights into Titanic's history, surviving the shipwreck due to its sturdy material. Teresa Martin has transformed her private doll museum into a spacious public exhibit, adding an information board detailing the doll's remarkable journey. The doll, a palpable reminder of the Titanic's tragic tale, stands as a unique relic in Spain's doll museum landscape. 3. Light Up Cane A unique walking stick with a fascinating history and a receipt from a first-class Titanic passenger were auctioned by Guernsey's back in 2019. The walking stick, once owned by socialite Ella White, played a crucial role in signaling rescue ships from Titanic's lifeboat 8 during the sinking. Ella, a prominent figure known for her open lifestyle, used the stick with a built-in electric light to save lives. Ella's unconventional life, documented in Walter Lord's A Night to Remember, adds significance to the walking stick. The artifact was shown in Fox News the same year in a representative video reportage. The auction also featured a receipt given to a first-class passenger who chose not to eat in the designated dining room, with the difference made up in this receipt. In addition, pottery shards recovered from the Titanic wreck site were also available for bidding. Two. Bottles of Champagne Dive into the haunting depths of the Titanic's submerged world with these chilling images extracted from a cutting-edge 3D digital twin of the legendary shipwreck. The detailed scan, crafted by Magellan Lottard, brings to light a pair of abandoned shoes and unopened champagne bottles resting on the floor of the North Atlantic, introducing a profoundly human element to the historic disaster offering an almost magical view as if the water has been mysteriously lifted, this scan meticulously captures the remnants of the ship, from the iconic grand staircase to scattered artifacts 
like champagne bottles and clothing across the debris field. Constructed from a whopping 700,000 images meticulously taken by remote-controlled submersibles, the 3D scan aims to deliver a comprehensive and unbiased perspective on the Titanic wreck. Beyond the chilling visuals, this technological feat aspires to unravel lingering questions about the collision and sinking of the Titanic, a tragedy that unfolded during its maiden voyage in 1912. Through this innovative approach, researchers hope to uncover new insights into the historic night and the sequence of events that led to the sinking of the ship, deemed the epitome of luxury in its time. 1. Whistle Over a century after the tragic sinking of the Titanic, the heroic legacy of 5th Officer Harold Lowe comes to light as his family releases a captivating archive of his possessions for auction. Harold's calmness and courage during the disaster saved numerous lives, particularly his efforts in assisting women and children into lifeboats. As the only Titanic officer to go back and rescue people, Harold's remarkable bravery left an indelible mark on the tragic event. The archive comprises poignant items, such as a telescope given to him by a survivor, inscribed as a tribute to the real hero of the Titanic. Also included was Harold's officer's whistle, possibly used to organize passengers during the sinking. The collection features a watercolor painting of the liner by Harold, a rare photo of all officers on the RMS Carpathia, which is the ship that rescued Titanic survivors and his certificate of competency as a master of a ship. These items, never seen or auctioned before, offer a unique glimpse into the life and valor of Harold, a figure venerated by the Titanic community for his selfless actions during the historic tragedy. Harold continued his seafaring career after the disaster, passing away in 1944 at the age of 61. What was the most fascinating Titanic discovery for you? Let us know in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos that we made, click on one on the screen or take a look at the channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.